Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how we can use ChatGPT to analyze thousands of Amazon reviews without overshooting the token limit or having to pay too much in API cost. So basically, why would we even want to do that? If you do any kind of Amazon FBA or you have your own product or you want to make a better product, you always go to those winning products and try to find out what people like or dislike about it. The problem is when this thing has 27,000 views and even by one star reviews, it's over a thousand. We can't just go and copy all of them, put them in ChatGPT and say what people don't like about this because it's just too many tokens. Even with the big GPT-4 model, it's just too many. And if you then would want to do it automatically with the API, it would just be way too expensive. So what is the way around that? The way around that is to not just use ChatGPT, but also machine learning. So I'm gonna show you this in the little app I built. We just take the ASIN of the product we get the reviews and we can analyze the negative reviews. So the one, two and three stars. And we're gonna do something called latent duplic allocation, which is basically just a machine learning algorithm that goes through all of the reviews and text and finds out the most relevant words and topics in it. So for example, we have now world pair of twos. So month one, the support, arch little, and it goes to all the texts and figure out what people are telling about the most. So we don't have to have like 20,000 words in all of the reviews, but just the most relevant ones. And then also grouped into different kind of, you know, topics because that was LDA does, it finds out topics. So this one talks about art support, this one talks about money. And then we send this to ChatGPT and say, we have this topics and now find out what people are talking about, because this is where the AI is really good at of analyzing text and giving us like more understandable insights. So for example, here we can see poor arch support. Customers complain about inadequate arch support, especially for conditions like plantar physiosis, whatever it is. And some mentioned the arch support was not advertised or provided relief for their foot pain, which is really good. And we get all those things like arch support, durability problems or fit and size problems. And this in seconds without having to use too many tokens. And I'm going to just show you how we're going to build something like this and how it works in code. Don't worry, you don't have to understand the code too much, but just to see how it works together. So as you can see, this was a very simple web app that I built with Flask, which is just a Python framework and nothing big or fancy. And also we don't have direct access to the newest Amazon reviews because we would have to scrape them. That's why I'm using an old database of Amazon fashion data. And this is from 2018. That's why this one has way less reviews than it has right now. But the product is the same. And we let those in. And then here is where the magic happens. We first take off the ASIN that we put in the form and then we select the review type because we don't only just have negative, but we also have positive reviews. For this, we would just take all the reviews that are greater than four stars, and so like four and five stars, and take them out and find out what people like about it. Because sometimes we also just want to make a new product and find out why people even like the first one in the first place. And But now we would just take the negative and we would take anything that has less than three stars. Then we take all those reviews as text and we put them into TFID vectorizer. This stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. I know a long fancy word, but it just means how often does a word come in a corpus of text. Corpus is just a machine learning term for an unorganized or unprocessed group of text. And then we also have some variables called max, min, or stop words. So the max is just if a word comes in there more than 95%, it will be put out. So for example, like and or the, or like very common like English words, also like commas or points, they will be then all taken out. And minimum is like if a word is just, doesn't come there too often, like we are set it to two. So if a word is less than two, we also don't want it because we don't want some special extra words that no one cares about. But later we can also like adjust those values to make it more precise because right now it's not really fine tuned. So we won't get the best possible results, but we could have to fine tune it later. And also stop words mean that like and or the, like those common English words that are just made to build a sentence will also be cut out. And then we set the range, which is usually set to one. So we try to get out one singular word, 
but I set it to two, so like two word pairs. We can also set it to three or like four or five, but I found like two worked way better. But this is also like a fine tuning thing we would have to do later. And this then cleans basically our text of words, and then we put in our data frame of the negative reviews in this vectorizer and we clean it. And then we train our LDA model, which we just import with sklearn, which is also a very popular Python machine learning library. So it doesn't take that much code, it's just mostly importing those pre-trained models. And then we set the end components to 15. This means that we're looking for 15 topics. The topics thing with uh, LDA is basically, we go through all the text and we try to find out what topics are talked about. So for example, if we have a text that talks about dogs, one talks about cats, it would figure out, oh, like golden retriever or um, woof or something would be then for the dog column and like cat or meow or cat tree or something like this would be on the cat column. But it also would probably make a new topic called animals where both of them would be in there. So you can see it, but it doesn't name those topics. It just finds out words that are very commonly used and grouped together. And that's what we're trying to do. We don't try to find the name of the topics. We just try to find out what people are talking about the most. And then this random state means that it can be reproduced the same way. So it's not just a random thing, but we take the same topics every time. Then we fit that data and then we give out our top words. And then we display the top words with 15, which just means how many words are there per topic. So now it's 15, though 15 times two, so it's 30 in our case, but we can also adjust it for later use if you want to fine tune it more. So for example, if you would have like a product that has 10,000 or 20,000 reviews, you maybe want more topics with more words. And if you have one with less, you would then put it onto less to be more precise and not have too much junk in there basically. And then we get this list of lists. So for example, we get 15 lists with always 15 elements in there. And then we send this to ChatGPT, which is also just a very simple API call. We have now the prompt for positive and the prompt for negatives. In this case, it would be the negative. So I have performed an LDA latent click allocation analysis on a collection of product reviews and obtained the following topics. Each topic is represented by a list of its most significant words. Please analyze these topics to identify and summarize the main issue or problems customers have for the product. And then we add the string of our data. We send us to ChatGPT and then we get a response out. As you can see here, we got those topics with those different words and we get this very good insight response. And this just shows you of a new way of how we can analyze customers, you know, ideas about um, products without having to go through it individually or just having to have a giant amount of data, which will cost way too much money to analyze. So we get the best out of both worlds. And it's way more precise than like other machine learning things, for example, like sentiment analysis, which just looks if a comment is positive or negative, which I don't think we need because we see if it's negative, it has to be a one star. But this is something we could also implement later for a more precise version that we can say, is this comment positive in like a, a negative review or is it negative in a good review and then make it even more precise and get more data points. But this would be something we have to then find out later if we wanted to implement this better in a later product or you know production ready app. If you want to do something like this, I'm gonna put the code in the description or if you want to build something like that you can also ask me questions just send me a message and i would love to help you with this or work with you on that well anyways i hope you find it interesting and helpful and see you in the next one